just, you know, just going to the next step, you know, but, but it's all God. So, yeah. you know. And you're seizing I, I, the I, moment, I, which is amazing. And I, I thank you for seizing that moment. I believe God said there would be a speed up of time mm-hmm. and that things would happen quickly. And I believe you're right in the middle of it. God has called you to sound the trumpet, to warn America, to warn the world. And yet uh, you're on a fast track. You're, mm-hmm. you're in, how many miles do you think you've uh, flown? I, I, since? I don't even. I, I, I've lost track of miles. I've lost track of everything. I go to the airport. I don't even know what plane I'm going. I don't have time to look at the plane until they last minute say, okay, what airline? I just go to the thing, and then I go to the next place. That, right. That's how it is. I don't have time to even think about it. Um, but things are speeding up. I mean, things are speeding up in America. Yes. I mean, what's happening? Yes. Things are speeding up in the world. Yes. It, it is. We are at critical moments. So, yeah, I don't believe I have a choice. You know, I remember once when I left here, Morningside, and I went to the they have an air, a little airport yes. where everybody waves as yes, you go. Yes, yes, little Branson and, uh, Airport. And I love that airport. You feel guilty leaving because yeah, they're waving. Yeah, they wave. And, they're sweet. Yes. I said, Lord, you know, I'm giving a heavy thing here. It's one of the first times I was here. And, and, and I just opened the Bible, and it's, 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 son of man, if you don't blow that trumpet, you're, you're accountable. So, yeah, oh. we have to. We oh. have yeah. to. We yeah. have to. Boy, that's it's critical. Good. God has called Rabbi... Mm. To sound that alarm. Yes. To warn the world, the war, the harbinger, 9-11. I knew after 9-11. I knew 9-11 wasn't, as you do, wasn't some ordinary event. We knew that something was being said to America. And God began to unveil it to you almost from the, the first moment, wasn't it? When I was praying, I was led immediately to that section of Isaiah that speaks of that first strike of warning on the land. And I knew that. I got that. And right after that, David Wilkerson then shared in New York City, said this is the word from the Lord, and he shares the same chapter and Isaiah 9.10, which would become the whole decoder of the harbingers without realizing, he didn't realize, you know, the things hadn't happened yet. Then it was after that when I was in New York City at Ground Zero and the Lord just transfixed my attention to this object and said, you have to seek this out. There is something you have to find here. And when I did, that began the harvest. It just exploded, this, this mystery that, that blew me away first. And then, and then it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how it began. And now we keep seeing new chapters of the yeah. Harbinger. This is not of me. It has a life of its own to where I look at it mm-hmm. and I get blown away. And what people tell me, and I don't believe it, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're telling me, but this is here. But things that are in the book have come true. Even there's a date in the book where the thing came true on the date afterwards. There's, there's a uh, foreshadow that the president fulfilled afterwards, you know, inscribing those words on the tower, you know, um, and then finding out that we were actually, the whole harbinger went forth on the very land of the man who owned Ground Zero in ancient time. He had two lands. The other was the land of our building. Your church. Our church. Uh, uh, Beth Israel, Jerusalem Center. The Jerusalem is, is Center. on his homeland, is on the place where he lived. The man, the keeper of Ground Zero, in ancient, who dedicated it all to the Lord. The, and the sign America. is the name of the man. The sign, the sign of our, the coming uh, on, on our the street. street. Ryerson is the name of the keeper of Ground Zero. And then if you go to Ground Zero, you find the other name. They, they, they go together of that farm that was Ground Zero. I mean, it's the only land in the, in the planet, the two lands that are linked together, it's Ground Zero and where the Harbinger went forth. So the Harbingers appeared in one of the lands, and the, har- the, the, the message came forth from the other. We had no idea. I mean, God is, you know, and this is, this is when, we, when the Harbinger started, and I, we almost lost our build. We actually did lose our first building. It was like warfare, and the Lord brought us to this land. We had never, no idea until he revealed it. But he's in every detail. We only yeah. find out. After. Yeah. You, know. you were in dismay, brother, <laughs> because you were losing your church building. As you had, your church left the building without... with, with nothing. I, we, we, as soon this happened, as soon as I started sharing the Harbinger, all hell came against the ministry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was like, it was like the enemy wanted to stop that message before it became what it became. And so what happened is that the town and the landlord decided they're going to destroy our building. So it came down to the last service. We had no place to go. We had the whole service. We celebrated. We're going out with joy. We led forth, and we went out to nothing. We had nothing. And we locked up the building. 
The next day, the Lord gave us a new building. The next day, after we lost the first building. So literally, and then, he, and where he brought us was, turned out to be this sacred land that was part of the mystery to begin with. The land, the, the 9-11, uh, the, the, land, found, the man who owned 9-11, the, the very Zero, land that they moved to across the that river. That replaced Ground Zero, it was the redemption of Ground Zero. And it, and it was, you know, and actually the harbinger, the, you know, the, first, the beginning of the revelation, it came while I was standing on Ground Zero. It finished on his first land. It finished on his second land when it went forth. And then, but on top of it, the place where we left was destroyed, ruins, and they, they destroyed the building, and they put up a Walmart. And Walmart has a book department. And in the, one of the few books they have is The Harbinger. <laughs> so The Harbinger is going forth. When and they forth, don't carry that many books. <laughs> only they the best they sellers. And it, it, so the harbinger <laughs> was going forth, where the enemy tried to stop, is now going forth as a book in Walmart on the very ground where it's first preached. You know, it's going <laughs> forth to America. I yeah. love it. God always has the last word. Oh, he always And always I, I, I don't even want to get to it yet, but I have, uh, this is the new book. There it is. This is the new harbinger. This is the new book. It is not on the presses at this moment as we're taping. And uh, I, I, it is secret manuscript. <laughs> I have read it all, and I cry. The end of this book. Yeah. My God. Yeah. The end really gets. I'm never, I'm not, I don't. I'll probably never tell you the end of the book because I don't believe in telling the ends of books. But I want to tell you, it's, and this is the first yeah. mock-up. The uh, rabbi has never seen it before until, until a I've few minutes ago, until he came on the stage. Literally a few minutes ago. They brought ago. this out. This, yeah. this is not even a real book. This is what we call a dummy. <laughs> it's like me. But, that's the, <laughs> but the cover is that real. Cover this is the real, is the real cover. <laughs> yes. yes. The real cover because it hasn't even gone on the presses. It's just being pressed. It's, it's just, just getting ready, yes. isn't it? Yeah. This began, like many of the here. What? This, this book began with you. And the, now I'm sharing this. This is how it happened. You went to, you and Jerry, who works with your, the, the products, said to Jerry Charisma, the publisher, said, when's the next thing coming from Robert? When's the next book and when's the next thing, you know, coming? Mm -hmm. And I'd always, I'd been led, I mean, the next, the sequel to The Harbinger is yet to, to come. The Lord has led me that I have to wait until the time. It's linked to things happening. But I wasn't going to do anything, you know. And yeah. so then Charisma, they said, well, you know, Morningside is saying we really, they, we really need to have another thing. They're blaming me. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. And so, <laughs> so, they, so they said, well, you know what, we'd like to do like a book because the Shemitah is coming, the year of the Shemitah is coming, and people want to know all about this. So we, we got, let's do at least a booklet. So we want to do it, but your name, and, you know, I said, well, I said, all right, well, then I'll have to help you write it, you know, so I mean, I'll write it. You know. I said, so I'll write it. Don't put my name on it. I'll just, I'll write a thing. And so, you know, so that's how it began. And then, and then, but then as I started getting ready for it, all of these other revelations started flooding, which I didn't expect, flooding. And so it ended up not a booklet, it ended up 300 pages, you know, and we reduced it a bit from that. But, but it was filled, it got so big, the mystery of the Shemitah, I mean, it begins with the Harbinger, it's one of the mysteries of the Harbinger, but it is so big that it, it is not only, you know, determined the crash of Wall Street, the rise and fall, what is coming, but the but the the very world, the rise and fall of nations, um, everything time to this mystery from the Bible, exactly down. I mean, what has been, what is, and what is coming. And so this just blew me away. And this happened during the busiest time of my life. So I wrote this mostly on planes, on trains, and <laughs> hotel rooms. That's pretty much you know the, by a miracle. And then, so it became. And I wasn't still going to put my name. And I said, you know, you can have someone. I mean, you can do it from an editor or whatever. But the last moment they said, you know, this is your name. So, so this book became what it started here, became what nobody planned it to be. Then nobody expected this, including me. This was a surprise <laughs> thing. And it just, had, again, had a life of its own. There is so much, but, there, but truly, and, and we're, the first time we're really talking about this because it didn't technically exist, um, but there is, the mystery is just so big, so big, it has determined things down to the seconds. You know, down, I mean, to the days, the dates, the seconds. Mm -hmm. And and it is a coming. Another one is coming now. Um, and it's getting more intense. And so I believe that the Lord wanted this out, bef you know, as soon as possible. This is the guide to what the Smita year, the, mm -hmm. where in a few months, really, we're, gonna, we, we're entering a period of time and... Uh, 
you don't set dates. You make it very clear. Mm. I don't, I, I'm having a hard time not getting into this <laughs> book because you see, you see this where I marked it? You want to read this because you better know you are so bold in this book. I believe the Lord wants this out because of, because of what is coming. And, no, and this I never... is in this fast. He's accelerated. We talk about yeah. speeding up. This book uh, it is going to the press faster than almost any book I've ever heard. It, it makes no sense because because not only did no one plan this book, really, yeah. but but it's, I got things in the mail about this book before I finished it. You know, I got, I got a flyer, hey, this book's coming out, and it's not even finished. You said, was, oh, yeah. It was, just, it was just last Wednesday that the last changes were made, and it went to, it went to, the, to the print. So, and now it's going out. But I believe it's the Lord. It was the Lord's plan. I actually talked to Hubie, who was yes. the man at the airport, yes. before I said, no, Hubie, should I be doing He said, yes, this is, this is the Lord. This is preparing for what, for what is. Because yeah. I wasn't going to do anything, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, this just came. You, you just had Mark Biltz with you at, mm -hmm. your, at, the, yes, at, the, at the Jerusalem Center. I, uh, I never know what to call it, church, tabernacle, or temple, thing, temple place, synagogue. Thing, <laughs> we can call them all those things. <laughs> Meeting right? yeah. Yeah. Assembling place. Yeah, and he has, God gave him the revel, just a revelation of the blood moons. And he's been on our program many times. And we see that timing. We see the, 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 the like, the blood moves don't just happen. They happen on date. And it's amazing how many happen on holy days. And so God has a set time. And I think everyone here today needs to understand. And I believe with all of my heart, I know God changes his mind at least once. Uh, in Jonah's case, he, he was going to destroy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nineveh. But Nineveh repented. And it's interesting, just to, in the Hebrew, when it says Nineveh shall be 40 days, Nineveh shall be over, it said destroyed or, or, but also means overturned. So you can take it as destruction or shall be overturned. Return. Well, they were overturned. They went from sin to a total revival. So, so even in that, God, God, it's, God is accurate and true. Mm. Even the warning, is it destruction or hope? You know? That's the only hope for America. Yeah, Absolutely. I believe, I believe, I've said this before, I've said this here, and I'm not talking about the timing, though, though they could be in, in a specific way, but a great shaking is coming, and it, and it is for the purpose. It's because without shaking, this nation will not turn back, and the only hope is shaking. That's is right. shaking. We're going to talk in the next few days. We're so glad mm -hmm. to have you back for a oh, week or so. Oh, we are. New development of the Harbinger. We're going to mm -hmm. share that this yeah. week. Mm -hmm. We're going to yes. share... Uh, God willing, we're booked to go with you to Israel. Yes. Yes. Woo. I can't we're believe so Lori's never been to Israel. No. My, my and uh, we'll bring our cameras there. Rabbi. We'll originate program there. Yep. It may be the maybe the coming of the Lord or I something. Said, hey, I don't know. Hey, but and, no, and, I, and if all hell breaks loose while we're there, I said no better place for the Lord to take us than straight from yeah. the Holy Land. I like, I'm ready to go if that's yeah. what happens. I, I just have to ask you about Israel. Everybody's... Yeah. Talking about the Psalms 83 war, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we know which is coming. We don't know when. Mm -hmm. But could you give us an update, Rabbi? Yeah, well, you go to Israel occasionally. I do. I do. And I'll be there before the tour, too. I have to go back and forth. But, but I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of a spiritual the part of this or the, the mm -hmm. underside of it. First of all, I mean, just, just to keep always our perspective, yeah. no matter who it is, no matter what their name is, no matter what the organization is, it's, it's beyond them. This is the enemy. The enemy has tried to destroy the Jewish people for 4,000 years, 2000, last 2,000, try to wipe them out the 20th century. They, the names keep changing. Hamas, Saddam Hussein, Joseph Stalin, Hitler. It just, it doesn't, it's not based on them. It's, this is, the, this is an, a fallen angelic being who is dealing with that enemy that Israel is dealing with and that is trying to wipe them out because he knows what's coming. So he's trying to wipe them out. You know, but interesting, you know, we just talked before about, about that one-year Bible, and then the thing that was appointed for 9-11, well, which was the Harbinger Scripture. But also in every one-year Bible, appointed is another verse, which is Psalm 55, which speaks about destruction. This was appointed for 9-11, and everyone speaks about destruction in the city. And the word that they use for destruction or violence in the city is a word that's an amazing word because it, it means something in Hebrew and it means something in Arabic. 
And that word, which, mean, which means violence or destruction, is the word, in the Bible, is the word Hamas. Oh. Uh-huh. It's the uh-huh. word in the Bible, is the word Hamas. In Arabic, it means, it means fanaticism and zeal. In Hebrew, it means destruction and violence. And, and actually, I'll tell you, it also means, listen to what Hamas means in the Bible. It means damage, cruelty, oppression, unrighteousness, wrongdoing, falsehood, and to, to act violently. And let me just listen to this. I, and this is just, by the way, I didn't plan this except that I was told that, you know, you were talking about this. So we upstairs last night, I just looked in the Bible. So let me just share what's here. In the Bible, what it says about Hamas. Listen, the word Hamas. Okay. Psalm 25. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with a Hamas hatred. Psalm 74, 20. Think about the tunnels with Hamas. Think yes. about this. Yes. The dark places of the earth are full of the dwelling places of Hamas. Oh, my. Prov- uh, okay. Second Samuel 22. You saved me from Hamas. Psalm 11. But the wicked and he who loves Hamas, the Lord's soul hates. Uh, Isaiah 53, Messiah. Listen to this. But it says he had done no Hamas. He's the opposite of Hamas. He had done no violence. Ezekiel 7, Hamas has risen up into a rod of wickedness. Uh, Ezekiel 7, the land is full of crimes of blood and the city is full of Hamas. And let me give you, let me give you one more. There's, there's more. Actually, just take your time. No, that, that's inc- well, this, oh, is this is revelation. It this is. is just last night. And the thing is that, that oh. the, 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 it, Obadiah speaks about Esau, the descendants of Esau. He says, your, 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 it's your shame that you went against your brother Isaac. In other words, and many of the, the descendants of Esau are, are linked with these people, with, with many Arabic people. And they're wonderful. There are wonderful God-loving Arabic people. But, yeah. but. But you have that as well. So it says that it's your shame that you went against Isaac. You know. So listen to what it says here. It says, it says this. It says, for, speaking about the descendants of Esau, for your Hamas against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you. So it's talking about the descendants of Esau. It says your Hamas against him. And now listen to this, last one. This is a promise to Israel. Listen, Isaiah, Isaiah 60. For Hamas shall no more be heard in your land nor the wasting of destruction in your borders, you'll call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Mm. That is powerful. There is that so... Is the Bible. <laughs> it's just right yeah. here in the Word. It's been there all these years. Oh, wow. Thousands of years old. Oh. The, the Word, I quake and shake under wow. the Spirit yeah, of amazing. what's going on. We are there. We're in the final days. Church, if you're not studying the Word, if you're just going to happy church and you're not studying the Word of God and you're just hearing preaching about how to get more money, the money's going to be gone. All the people that are prophesying today that I trust are saying there's going to be a crash in America like we've never... Uh, Just share a couple of them. Yeah, here's one headline. This is from Money News. The headline reads this. Billionaire warns Yellen collapse will be unlike any other. It says another horrific stock market crash is coming, and the next bust will be unlike any other we have seen. That's the message from Jeremy Grantham, co-founder and chief investment strategist of GMO, a Boston-based firm of $117 billion. What do they mean, Yellen collapse? Well, Yellen is actually the Federal Reserve Chair woman, I guess you could say, yeah. and of the Federal Reserve. So they're saying that she's acting in such, and he doesn't pull any punch, I mean, he's saying that she's acting in such an ignorant way that the Yellen collapse can, is going to be blamed on her. They're actually putting a name to it. Wow. Yeah. Really? When you study the Samhita, the, the warning, and we're coming to a time of, of warning and judgment, are we not, Rabbi? We are in a time of warning and of judgment, and it is accelerating. Since I was here last time, things have accelerated in America, just, you know, because this is the other side. The harbingers continue because what's happening in the nation is continuing, the apostasy from God. I mean, rapid fire where believers can hardly, can hardly keep up with it and yeah. can hardly believe 
how far it's come in such a short time. Right. Just in the last time since I've been here, it, I mean, it has marriage has been has been struck down in state after state after state. It has never, never not been struck down since that Supreme Court ruling. This was a tipping point. I believe, you know, 19, I mean, sorry, 2012 was a tipping point. It was the first time the president came against the biblical definition of marriage. It was the first time the, na the majority did. And since you, when you reach a tipping point, things accelerate. So right. things have accelerated since. You have the Supreme Court, you have this and now, but it's getting to the point where you know, the Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. It goes together. So yes. as much every time that evil is called good, mm -hmm. there's another step of calling good evil and silencing believers. And ultimately, we are watching, we are watching the beginnings of persecution in this land, where, where, where believers are made to be the villains, they're always vilified, and where even the government is trying to force believers fun, doing things like fund abortion, which never happened before, mm -hmm. you know, and... Um, to to partake in what is immoral, you know, or be punished. I mean, there was just a, a, a executive order that came out that ultimately the, the government will say if you if you're a nonprofit or you're your religious group and you do not you are not endorsing basically homosexuality, we will cut ourselves off from you. I mean, this is major stuff, and so we are watching these these risks. So at the same time. The signs of judgment are increasing, just as in Israel's last days. That's why the, harbinger, the signs of the harbinger have never stopped. That's why this is coming, and it's a, it's a kind of dangerous thing that these things are all converging. Even when you look at what Mark Biltz has said, you know, that the period of the blood moons, it actually, it's a, a year and a half period. But one, most of that period is the Shemitah. And, you know, we're, we're just in the beginning of the period. Yeah. Once we reach September, once we're in September now, this is... This the, the entire thing is together. It's all the Shemitah now. You know, it's all happening at the same time. And it's all going to culminate at the, at the peak climax of the Shemitah. So these are the dangerous things. Because what we're watching, if you look at the last two, 2001 and 2008, you see it's accelerating. It's happening more exact, more precise. It's happening. So this is a sign that we are heading towards judgment, yeah. getting closer. And one of the things, I'm not going to share it now, but one of the things about the latest things about the Harbinger is a uh, dramatic sign that we are much closer to that moment. One of the things that's making me very, very upset and very nervous is people are predicting another Jewish Holocaust. I mean, just literally saying we're, we're on the verge of a Holocaust. And in England, in, in France... They're marching in the streets. Uh -huh. Isn't that right, Zach? That's exactly right. And you know, it's really unfortunate. I was reading a recent article where it's almost becoming the new fad. That it's the cool thing to be anti-Israel. Oh. In France, they're marching by the thousands. In England, they're marching. But guess who's marching? Do you know who's marching? Who's in those marches? There are Muslim the activists in there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. They're not the, the just the run-of-the-mill people of France, the run-of-the-mill people. These are anti-Jewish people. I mean, this pretty much sums it up right here. This article is from the Washington Post, and it says, More clarity in Gaza. Here's the difference between us, explains the Israeli prime minister. We're using missile defense to protect our civilians, and they're using their civilians to protect their missiles. And the man, I mean, we are so misguided in our, even in our country. The man who re is supposed to represent America, the man who's supposed to represent our values, is rewriting history. There is, there is an article right here in front of me. And this is Obama that says this. Muslims built the very fabric of our nation. Our president is trying to rewrite history. He's trying to guide it. Like Rabbi said, Isaiah 520, whenever they're calling good evil and evil good, this wasn't just simply an end-time prophetic scripture verse. What Isaiah was saying was that the worst possible thing that can happen to a society, the thing that is just at the bottom of the barrel, it gets no worse, is whenever a society starts calling the good things of God evil and the evil things good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the Psalms 83 war. Uh, John Shorey, he believes that when the other nations join in 
to fight Israel, that that will be, that that has to be uh, one of the signs of the, the Psalms 83 war. Mm -hmm. And the headline here, it says uh, that uh, Iran general, here's what he is saying. He's saying, we will hunt down Israelis house to house. Mm -hmm. And they can say that without any condemnation from the world. You know, it is, it is amazing. I mean, when you try to understand this, they said, you know, years ago they said it was, it was this reason for anti-Semitism, this reason for... So, and, so, and so a man named Theodore Herzl said, we're going to come back to Israel, Jewish people, let's go back, and that's going to be the, pro the solver. Because the reason is because we have no nation. So the reason is that's why we're so hated. They go back to Israel, they're going to find peace. Well, they went back to Israel more hatred so there's it, it is supernatural it is absolutely you want evidence you know you want evidence people say like what's the evidence of god well one of the evidences of god is the jewish people that they exist god yes. said you're in yes. this world nothing no, the 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 stars as long as there's stars and the sun you're not going to be destroyed that's one so as long as the jewish people exist you know god exists anyway secondly but the same thing you want an evidence of the devil that he's real look at the history of israel Look at what's been done to them. Look at what happened with Hitler. Look at the satanic thing. What is this force that is trying to wipe them out? It is, it is the reality of the enemy. The Messiah said 2,000 years ago, your shalom is hidden from you, you know, until you find it. But why, does the, why has the world been trying to wipe them out for 2,000 years? Because the enemy knows what it means when they come to Messiah, his, his war is over. He's finished. He's defeated. That's why. That's the reason. It's amazing this warfare over Israel and Jerusalem. You go to, in the natural Jerusalem. You got great cities. Jerusalem is a bunch of rocks, basically. It's not. It's in the natural doesn't have anything that any that any major city has. Has nothing, and yet it's the most fought over city in the history of the world. The world has been trying to get why, because God says this is my city. This is where I put my name, and this is where I'm coming back. That is why. And so the enemy has tried to destroy that city again. And also, what really bothers the enemy is having Jewish people there. That's why the world says, you know, you can't. It's the only place where, where it's a crime to, for Jewish people to settle in their own land. The world says this is a crime. You build a house, this is a crime. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want them there because the Lord said they need to. When they come there, that's the, that's the beginning of when I'm coming. I'm not coming again until they're there. The devil, we'll put a name on him, is trying to destroy the very word of God. Yes. The Jew has to be the, the uh, Jesus, yes. the, the fulfillment. He can't come back if the Jews haven't returned to Israel. Yes. So just the fact that they returned 70 years ago, roughly, and bu built a city there is, is the foundational stone of prophecy of the coming of the Lord. And now all of that is, I believe we're in that last generation. It's all happening. You can feel it, can't you? You know the king is coming. Yes. You know the word. Yes. You wouldn't be in this room if you didn't know that. But most of the church is not even looking at what God's doing. They're looking at how to get more money in their pocket, which is the love of money is the root of all evil. How could we be moving into another gospel when Jesus is about to return? It's happening. We, I believe we only have a short, uh, as John Shorey puts it, a window of, of the Lord's return. I really believe we are in the day. I don't see how it could be much longer because of the times of the generation, because of all the fulfillment. The Jews have returned. The warfare that's going on, there's warfare. <laughs> This is crazy. The warfare in the United States of America. We have turned our backs against God. We have mocked God. And God's not mocked. No. 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 You have two. You have major things happening at once. You have one. You have America distancing itself from Israel in the last few years. Number one. At the same time, America is rapidly turning against the ways of God. Rapidly. And you wonder how far could it go? Yeah. And how far will the Lord allow it? Yeah. You know, so he, as you said, he is not mocked. And he war but he warns, before, his heart is mercy. He warns before he judges. He calls for that reason. And even then, I mean, he's long-suffering. He holds back. But finally there comes a point where it can't be held back anymore. But he warns his people. And I, what I found is around the country, I found that most believers, if you ask them, they sense it already. 
they, they would tell you, yes, we believe something is coming. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's, I've never had that before, mm-hmm. you know, where it's been that, that palpable, that mm-hmm. there is something coming here. America is in danger of judgment. Never before. Mm-hmm. You know, so we are, yes, this is what we, all, we knew about yeah. in days when we learned about prophecy. It's coming. We talked about persecution, but it didn't have, now it's coming. We talked about, you know, about, it's coming. So, yes, and we have to be ready, which is one of the things that you guys do. The book, The Mystery of the Sumita, will be out shortly. We'll announce it on the show. Uh, The first appearance will be here. We'll be here. And uh, we have, (laughs) I call it the the mystery of the Sumita. This is the mystery copy I have in my hand. (laughs) Kindergarten level. Would you you explain that? Yes, Shemita Shemita speaks of that, the seventh year of the Bible that most people don't know. They know the Sabbath day, but... Mm -hmm. It was a Sabbath year. Every seventh year, it was the Shemitah. The word can mean release. That's how people would know it. Uh, Remission or wiping away of debt. But the word also means the collapse, the fall, the shaking, or the overthrowing. So it it has a, this thing is so filled, it it has a whole prophetic realm, the Shemitah, that has not only affected the history of Israel, has affected the history of America, is affecting will and literally the nations, the world. This is not only America. This is the world. I mean, it is affected, it has determined world wars, global cataclysms. I mean, even, I mean, I mean, I cannot tell you just how big this thing is, but it is gigantic, gigantic. And so this is God, really God's exact timepiece that is linked. It can be blessing or it turns to judgment. And that's what we're dealing with right now. And so it was a time when it was a time when the land was to rest. Sabbath for the land. The land rests every seventh year. You shall have a Sabbath, and there's no sowing, no reaping, no plowing, nothing. You let everything. There's no buying or selling of the fruits. It is a total Sabbath rest, which is like which was to be a good thing initially, but it turns into something else. And the thing is that on the last day of the Shemitah, the very last day is a, an amazing thing called Elul 29, when that's the 29th day of the Hebrew month Elul, when all debts are wiped out, all credits wiped out, the financial accounts are wiped clean, which was a blessing, but when Israel turned away from God, this blessing turned into judgment, literally led to the wiping away of Jerusalem in the days of Jeremiah, was all linked to the mystery of the Shemitah. The Shemitah is really, the spiritual meaning is it's really, saying that God is sovereign. You don't, you know, you, have, you go after money, you go after, God is the one who owns the land. God is the one who has given you every blessing you have. God is the one who is king over all things. And so it's really, it was a humbling, it was a, it, the Shemitah humbles the pride of man. The Shemitah reminds man or, or a nation that its blessings all come from God. And if with, you put God out of the picture, yeah. your blessings are going to fall. Oh, boy. Could it be at work right now? I mean, it's it is in, at work in right America. Now. Yeah. Yes, it is. that's the amazing thing. It is at work. It has affected. We're going to see you know, as we get deeper. It's going to be. It, it, um, it has affected. It lies behind not only in the harbinger. You read about really the most dramatic thing, the last things that happened, which was what happened in 2001 and 2008, which we'll we'll touch on. But it turns out, and I didn't know this when I wrote it. I had an idea. I had a feeling, but I did. It's been affecting our lives from the day we were born. It's been, affecting, it's been affecting our jobs. It's been affecting the rise of the economy, the fall of the economy, the rise of Wall Street, fall of Wall Street, what happens in the White House. It affects, it affects what happened overseas. It's been affecting every one of our lives, and it will affect it, it, the future. So, yes, yes, yes. Could you just, it, so people begin to understand, what are the signs of the Sumita? Yeah, what, what would, how would it appear? Okay. It the, became like what to watch for. Like the, kind of the I like keys. I'm, I'm just, I like little points <laughs> yeah. and, and that, yeah. that people can remember. Yes. Because see what's going on because we are there, people. We are there. And the more I study and reading your new book, uh, it's overwhelming that, you know, I, 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 I don't know what to do because people won't listen. That's, you know, that's how I, a watchman often feels. Really? Yeah. You're blowing the shofar. You're trying to wake up the people. That's what the Lord said. But once you blow the, show, you blow the shofar, you're not responsible of whether they wake up or not or whether they're going to they're gonna say yes or no. Your, our, our charge is to blow the shofar, you know, wow. our, no matter what. Uh, blow the shofar. Donald and, you know, one of the reasons, 
one of the reasons you don't hear a lot of people blowing the shofar is because they're scared to death. The headlines this week, the government's coming for the church next. Have you read those headlines? This is just out the last 48 hours. They're coming for the church. And I'll tell you what, most churches are scared to say what we're saying. They're afraid to tell you the truth. They're afraid. Government has power. Politicians crush each other through political power. I've seen it. I've walked with presidents. I have talked with them. I've, I'm telling you, politics can bring out a bad spirit in anybody, I think. But to keep that power and to win that power. And I'm not anti-anybody. I'm, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not an Independent. I'm just a Christian who loves Jesus, who believes that we ought to honor God in our nation. But I know I have seen, I have seen wonderful men of God. I've seen wonderful presidents. I have seen wonderful presidents sell their friends for political power. Huh. Power is corrupting. And we are living in a day where we must honor God. Mm -hmm. We must honor God. Yes. Yes. So give us just a couple of points there okay. as we leave today, okay. the program today. We're going to open up the mystery this week. And, yes. and in it, the key things to look, imagine... We're looking for fingerprints of this Shemitah appearing. Yeah. Well, first thing is, it affects the economy. It did, it did in Israel. It caused an economic cessation. So you got recession, looking at depression. Look for that. Secondly, now, we've already seen, you've told us about seven years gonna, after 9-11. Yes. I mean, we saw that crash. Then we saw seven more Yeah, years. Uh, well... Well, you're going to see that it's it's way it's even beyond that. Beyond it's, that now. It's beyond that. That's that's what. That, the, the that's other key, what we're yeah, see. the other key is the seven-year cycle. Okay, the other key. The other key is that that wiping away of financial accounts. You got financial collapse there. Another key is the month of Tishri. Remember that month, yes. Tishri. We'll get yes. into it. Tishri is the holiest month of the Hebrew year. Yes. But it's the very. It is the month that begins the Shemitah and the month that ends the Shemitah. It's the month that comes right after that moment of wipeout. So it's the month that manifests that wipeout, all the effects of that wipeout financially. So you get those keys. Now, one other thing is remember Elul 29. The month of Elul builds up to Tishri, builds up to that final moment. Now, with that final wipeout always happens when the sun goes down. But when the sun sets, all debts are wiped out. So yeah. these are some keys. Now, once you have the keys, we're going to see this thing manifest amazingly. I mean, amazingly. We're going to see things really that Nobel laureates in economics don't know because they don't read the Bible. We're going to see things that the, the, the heads of Wall Street don't know because most of them don't read the Bible. Yeah. But God wants us to know. Yes, he does. You mentioned the headline a few minutes ago. Uh, a billionaire, one of the richest men in the world, yeah. he is predicting a collapse. And here's what he says is coming, the financial collapse. He says it will be like, unlike any other. Something big is going to happen. We have the billboards of God called the sun and the moon de declaring in the blood moons on the holy days. It, it just, it's all shaking to me. It's all startling. I, I mean, I've been a Christian since a little boy. Don and I, we, my sister's here in the front row, but... We grew up in church. We grew up in church. We didn't have pews. We had benches. But we've grown up. We've heard about this. We've heard it preached. We've heard the prophecy preached. We heard, and here we are living in it. I just shake with it. I mean, I just, the Spirit of God. It, we, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I was thinking about God last night. And it was like I had a, a dream of God or a vision or something of God. And that God was excited. 
Can you imagine God? I don't know. I could be all wet. I don't know. But no, it's, in the just, Bi- it's in the Bible. But God, just... God was excited because everything that he has built towards the sending of his son, all of it, he's about to see the great, uh, great conclusion of all of mankind, of the son of God, death, why he came, the Jews returning, the, 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 the resurrection, the great moment, the greatest, if it was a play on stage of history, yeah. is on stage now. Yeah. We are opening the revelation. Yeah. We are opening that book truly, and, we, and it's going to be a quick walk through it. The king is coming back. Yes. yes. God. Yes. God's in charge. Yes. God's in charge. Hallelujah. There's not one mistake in the Bible, Rabbi. Everything you bring to us fits together. Yes. Is that right? Yes. God is perfect. And as you said, you said it like a stage coming up.